Well, we mentioned this is the one-month anniversary of, of the low. You've got to give some advice now uh, to our viewers this evening on what they should be thinking about next. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that we've seen the lows, but there's definitely more volatility to come. Long-term, I'm still optimistic. Short-term, I'm cautious. I think the market's discounting a lot of good news without verification. Uh, this move's been more on hope uh, than economic fundamentals. I think the things that we're, we're watching, obviously, economic data and profit data, although you know economic data is certainly not relevant right now, profit data has the potential to scare markets, but, but I don't think it's relevant either. It's more normalized earnings. You know, we're watching the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy, trying to ascertain how long the lockdown is going to sustain. And then we're looking for progression in diagnostics, therapeutics, and, uh, and of course, you know, hoping for a vaccine. And so I think we're telling, uh, telling clients to be, be a little more patient. We think the market's going to come to them. That said, you know, I'm in the consensus on that. And, you know, markets tend to make most of the people look silly most well, of the time. You raise a good point, right? Because you're certainly hearing more voices now saying pull back, pull back, pull back is coming. You should buy the dip. And then what you're suggesting is if everybody thinks that a pullback is coming, you may never get it. Correct. And, and of course, you couple that with, uh, you know, how powerful policy has been, both fiscal and monetary, how swift it's been. Um, the Fed standing behind you, the amount of cash on the sidelines. And, you know, you might not get uh, what we're all hoping for, which is another bite at the apple. Yeah, it's interesting. I have Joe Terranova uh, calling in as well. Uh, most of you know him from our uh, halftime report. Joe, thank you for calling in. I think, I think people really want advice at this point. They know that we've made this V-shaped bounce in the stock market, at least, at a time where Main Street certainly has not and won't. Uh, for an awfully long time. They want to know how long this could last and perhaps even what they should do with their money right now, if anything, or just wait. I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you for having me. I, I listened intently to what Rob said, and I agree with a lot of what he would say. Um, I would urge investors and your viewers to think about, on a pullback, where exactly do they want to deploy capital? And obviously, it's in an information technology but I also think you have to give strong consideration to health care. Health care is going to be part of the solution from COVID-19, and the equity franchises will respond accordingly. So I would include health care into the equation uh, for looking on opportunities on dips. Conversely, I heard Rob talking about the upside. Keep in mind that with an S&P 500 above 2,800, at that point, the market is competing with opportunities that can be found in the credit markets. And what I'm seeing in the last 10 days is credit investors who have a dollar to invest prefer to go and accept some of the high yield and investment grade offerings versus going in and purchasing equities above 2800. I'll tell you, it's interesting you say that. I mean, Lee Cooperman was talking about credit being more attractive than, than stocks today uh, as, as well. You know, Rob, you can't have, I discussed this with, with Mike Santoli earlier, because we've come, you know, so far, I'm just wondering what you think about, you know, the people who rely on dividends, for example, are, are we going to be in an environment where we have to watch every stock we buy? We need to take a close look at their dividend and ask ourselves a question whether we think that they're going to be cut in the months ahead and factor that into the investment decisions that we're making? Yes, I, I mean, I think that's one of the things that, that you need to look at. We, we are still buying uh, dividend equities, dividend growth equities, uh, companies that we uh, have a, a high degree of conviction that that's, that's not going to happen. Obviously, if anybody takes money from the government, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly not going to be raising their dividends. I would agree with Joe. Uh, you know, we are playing in what I would call the new defensives. Um, Communication services, healthcare, and although it's not, not, not overweight for the firm, technology as well. And then we're trying to get some optionality in some of the cyclicals, but in a much smaller, smaller way. And we're looking to buy that, that on the dip. Um, so that's kind of how we're thinking about it. And then I would, also agree with, uh, I would also agree with Joe that one of our favorite areas is high yield. I mean, 
the high yield markets are, are certainly not as expensive as the equity markets right now. I don't like you guys agreeing that much. We've got to do something about that the next time <laughs> on the halftime report. Uh, Joe, what about this idea that there's too much of a concentration in these big glamour names in technology, the Amazons and the Apples and some of the other ones? There is, and, and I think that's a great observation. And I think you're seeing a little bit of that. Um, this morning, the market, when it was up five, uh, 400, rather, I was watching Amazon intently in the FANG names, and they seemed exhausted, Scott. They kind of ran out of steam, and I think that's one of the contributing factors why uh, we fell back at the end of the day. Yes, you had the negative news surrounding Gilead, but past experiences in prior weeks, even on negative news, it has been the support that's been contributed from Amazon and from Apple and Microsoft that kind of supported the market. So I was a little discouraged today by the exhaustion that uh, presented itself from those mega cap technology names. Yeah, we'll see where they go in the days ahead. Gentlemen, thank you so much. That's Rob Seachin and Joe Terranova.